There are so many different index funds out there that sometimes it can be really difficult to figure out which ones can be the best for you. And if you're a Charles Schwab customer or you have a brokerage account with Charles Schwab, today I'm gonna walk you through the six best index funds at Charles Schwab. Now, if you're new here to the Master Money YouTube channel, we teach people how to build generational wealth with their money. And there are three brokerages that we love to utilize to invest in index funds. Number one is Fidelity. And we have a video talking about the six best index funds at Fidelity if you haven't checked that one out yet. We also have one at Vanguard, which is number two. And we absolutely love Vanguard as well. And then Charles Schwab is the third one. Now, Charles Schwab is newer to the index fund world. And some of their index funds are a little bit younger than like the OGs at Vanguard are. So some of these funds, what you're going to see is that they don't have as long of a time horizon as maybe some of the funds at Vanguard do. But still, these are fantastic funds that mirror the index. That's what you want an index fund to do is mirror the index so that it gets the exact same returns as the S&P 500. And each fund should have very similar returns to every other S&P 500 index fund. So let's dive in to each index fund that I love at Schwab. Now, number one is the Schwab S&P 500 index fund or SWPPX. And SWPPX is there to mirror the S&P 500. If you don't know what the S&P 500 is, it is the 500 largest stocks in the US stock market. It's actually a little over 500. It's about 505 stocks in the US stock market. And the beautiful thing about the S&P 500 is this is some of the best companies in the world. World. And if some of these companies are not performing well, there's a committee that reviews the S&P 500 and they kick out those companies that are not performing well and companies that are performing better come into play. So you always have the best companies in the US stock market when you invest in the S&P 500. And in fact, Warren Buffett actually invests his wife's money in the S&P 500. 500. So let's look at some of the with this index fund. So we look at the key stats here. The expense ratio of SWPPX is 0.02%. That is a very low expense ratio. You want your expense ratios to be below a half a percent and preferably below 0.30% if you can. Expenses will absolutely destroy your wealth building ability. So you want to keep them as low as you possibly can. Now the dividend yield on this fund is 1.54%. And the turnover ratio or how often they are turning over and buying and selling securities is 2.0%. You want this to be as low as possible as well because it reduces your tax liability if you have this turnover ratio low and they have it low here at 2.0%. Now the annualized all-time returns for this fund are 9.04%. So that's an amazing return of, on investment when you invest your dollars in this fund. Now let's look at some of the top 10 holdings here. The top 10 holdings they have are a lot of companies that you've heard of within the S&P 500. So there's Apple, there's Microsoft, there's Amazon, there's Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company. There's Alphabet, which is Google. There's United Health Group. There is another classification, the C shares of Alphabet. We have Johnson & Johnson, Exxon Mobil, and JP Morgan Chase. So amazing top 10 holdings within this company. You can see the pie graph there on how much weight these companies actually hold within this index fund. Now let's look at the total returns of this index fund because that's what truly matters when we care about this. And we're gonna look at some of the shorter term returns as well. So over the course of three years, this fund has returned 8.78%. Over the course of five years, 10%. 0.62% over the course of 10 years, 12.64% amazing returns over the course of 10 years. And then over 15 years, 9.94%. This is a fund that you can definitely build generational wealth over time if those historic returns continue on in the future. Now, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but this is a great fund to consider. Number two is the Schwab Total Stock Market Index or S. WTSX. Now, SWTSX is very similar to something like VTSAX at Vanguard, which is the total stock market index fund. And what they do is they mirror the entire stock market, the entire US stock market. Now, this is a very well diversified fund and is going to have a ton of different companies inside of this fund. Now, it has a very low expense ratio of 0.03%. It has a dividend yield of 1.48%. It still has that low turnover ratio of 2.0% as well. Now the annualized all-time returns thus far with this fund are only 7.31%, which is much lower than VTSAX, which is why I would choose something like VTSAX probably above this fund at this point in time, at the time I'm recording this video. But at the same time, those are still great returns over that time frame. Now the top 10 holdings in here are going to be very similar to the S&P 500 by weight because it's still the top 10 largest companies in the US stock market. So we're looking at Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway, Alphabet, United Health. Healthcare, Johnson & Johnson, Exxon Mobil, and JP Morgan Chase. Now let's look at the, the returns that have happened over
over the last few years to see what those returns are. So over the last three years, it's been 8.3%. Over the last five years, it's been 10.06%. Over the last 10 years, 12.18%. And over the last 15 years, 9.89%. So this is a fantastic Schwab fund. If you only have access to Schwab funds, this is a great one to look at. Maybe your 401k only gives you Schwab funds. And this is a great one to look at. But if you have the option, I do like VTSAX a little more than this one because it has a longer track record and historically has a little bit better returns than this one specifically. Now, if you're getting a ton of value out of this video, make sure you like this video right now. Number three is Schwab's US Large Cap Growth Index, or the ticker symbol is SWLGX. Now, this is their large cap growth index, meaning this is going to be their large cap stocks. The majority of this is going to be held in NASDAQ 100, which is the 100 largest companies within the US stock market. And the expense ratio is 0.04%. And the dividend yield is much lower than the first two. It's at 0.83%. And the turnover ratio is much higher because there's less companies in this fund. So it's got an 18 percent turnover ratio. Now the annualized all-time returns, and this is absolutely amazing. This fund has not been around for a very long time. It's only been around for about five years, but the annualized all-time returns are 12.95%. Now we've had some tremendous bear markets and bull markets within that time frame, So that is a fantastic rate of return. Let's look at the total return over the short term here on this five-year time horizon. So the total return over the last year we've been in the bear market is negative 11.53%. But over the last three years, it's been 9.01% percent and over the last five years it's been 12.58 so this is a fund where you can see the category, for example, over that same time frame. this is a fantastic fund, has been 9.66%. So other funds within this category have had a lower return than this exact fund has. Now, over the last 10 years, the category has done 12.34%. And over the last 15 years, 9.91%. Now, let's take a look at these top 10 holdings within this fund, because this is going to be some of the heavy hitters, the biggest hitters in the U.S. stock market. So we're going to look at Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, or Google. United Healthcare, NVIDIA, Visa, Tesla, and MasterCard Class A shares. So this is holding some very big funds. And you can see there's a lot more turnover. They're buying and selling a lot more stocks because there's less stocks in this fund than there are maybe in some other funds. So this so far does not have a very long track record, but at the same time, it's had some great returns over the last five years. Number four is Schwab's International Index Fund or SWISX. Now, you know, if you're trying to build out a three fund portfolio, a three fund portfolio consists of US based stocks, international based stocks and bonds. So this would be your international portion of your portfolio if you want to build a three fund portfolio with Schwab. Now the expense ratio on this one is 0.06%. And the dividend yield is a little bit higher than we saw in the last couple of funds. It's 2.53%. And the turnover ratio is pretty low at 5%. And the annualized all time returns are 5.09%. So international stocks have underperformed US based stocks over the last few decades. And the reason for this is because the US US stock market has just been surging specifically over the last 15 years or so. So as we look at this, we can see that this has just has underperformed some of the other stocks. Now, usually international stocks will perform better than US stocks when we're in points of recession or we have bear markets here in the US. So that's why a lot of people like to add this to their portfolio, because you can actually level out the volatility in your portfolio if you add international stocks. Now, this specific fund covers all international stocks. Now, let's go look at the total return over the last few years as well. So we are going to look at the last three years has been 3.74%. The last five years has been 3.01%. The last 10 years has been 5.07% and 15 years, 3.14%. So these are really subpar returns compared to a lot of other things. At the time of recording this, you can buy a T-bill for 5%, which is much higher than this fund has available to it. So when it comes to international stocks, I know they have had low returns. It's across the board. It's Vanguard, Fidelity, everybody's international funds have had lower returns. But if you're looking to have a three fund portfolio, this is what you add to a three fund portfolio, or you can add, even add something like emerging markets. If you're more interested in emerging markets, that would give you that three fund portfolio. But a true three fund portfolio would have an international index fund in there as well. Now, the top 10 holdings here are going to be very different top 10 holdings than what you see in the US based companies. So Nestle is number one, the highest weight 2.22% of this fund is actually Nestle, Novo Norsdick, we have Roche Holdings, AstraZeneca, Shell PLC, BHP Group, Total Energy. So there's a bunch of different companies within this fund. But sometimes when you're doing this, you want to compare this, say, hey, let me look at the US funds, look at the companies within that US fund. And would I rather own that US fund? Or would I rather own this top 10 holding? That's where you have to make the comparison 
there. Now, if you didn't want to hold US stocks, you can follow something like a Warren Buffett portfolio where he holds 90% in US stocks, 10% in bonds, or something along those lines as well. We have a video about that that you can check out. Now, number five is the Schwab Small Cap Index Fund or SWSSX. Now, small caps are companies that have a much smaller market cap than some of these larger companies that we have here that we've been talking about thus far. And adding small cap to your portfolio, if you want to have a very well diversified portfolio, maybe you want a four, five, or six fund portfolio, then you can add small cap to your portfolio. Now, and it just gives an additional diversification with some of these smaller companies. Now, when it comes to this small cap fund, here's some of the key stats. The expense ratio is 0.04%. So it has a very low expense ratio for this fund. And the dividend yield is 1.18%. So it's got a normalized dividend yield compared to all of these other ones. Now, the turnover ratio is 16% because the small caps are moving much more than large caps are, and they are much more volatile than large caps are as well. But you can see the annualized total returns of all time are 8.8%. 9.4%. So these have some great all-time returns and small caps have been doing well as of late. So year to date, 11.52% on this fund. And we're going to look at this from a three-year time horizon, a five-year, 10-year, and 15-year. So the three-year time horizon, it has done 6.51%. Over the five years, 6.44%. Over 10 years, 9.32%. So great 10-year returns there. And over 15 years, 8.98%. So the companies that are inside of this fund, the top 10 companies, these are small are companies. So you probably have likely never heard of these companies. E-mini Rust 2000 is number one. Halozyme Therapeutics is number two. Shockwave Medical is number three. Inspire Medical is number four. Incore Group is five. Crocs, you've heard of Crocs, I'm sure the shoes, is number six. Matador Resources is seven. Murphy Oil Corp, Agree Realty Corp. So there's a bunch of different things. So that's probably a REIT, that last one. So all of these companies you've likely never heard of, but small cap companies have been doing well as of late. So if you want that small cap exposure, that is one you can look at as well. And then the last one is if you want to have a three fund portfolio, or you want to do something like a Warren Buffett portfolio, a 90, 10, two fund portfolio, then you want to have some bonds as well. And they have a bond fund here at Schwab that has underperformed some of the other bond funds. So I would probably consider the Vanguard or Fidelity bond fund over this one, but they do have one if Schwab is your only option. So at Schwab, they have the US aggregate bond index fund and the expense ratio on this is 0.04%. The dividend yield is 2%. 0.40% and it has a high turnover ratio of 58% and the annualized all-time returns is 0.60%. So this is a downgrade for me. This is why I would probably choose the Fidelity or the Vanguard as well, because I think they were like in the 3.5% range when we were recording this, when I'm recording this video. So the total return all time, let's look at, take a look at this. See, it's only been around for five years, which is why the returns are low, but the total return all time is 1.38% year to date. Then we have over the last year, negative 8.13%. Over the last three years, negative 3.03%. And then five years, 0. 62%. And you can see the top 10 holdings here are a lot of mortgage and treasury notes that are available there that they have within this fund. So it's a very large mix of different bonds that they have available in this one in the total bond market index fund. So this is one that I would probably look at Fidelity, Vanguard, maybe some other options, maybe look at their ETFs as well, if you can add those, or if it's in your 401k you need, and you want bond exposure, this might be one of the only things that you have available to you. So listen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a ton about some of the best Schwab index funds that are out there. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. And we will see you on the next video.